Back in February, I released a video where I talked about getting laid off from a job, and at the time there were certain things I chose not to disclose, such as where was it that I got laid off from. But now, I'm a little bit more comfortable with sharing those details in this video. I was working at Goldman Sachs for about two years before I got laid off. I made this video as an in-depth coverage of my experience working there as a software engineer. Before I continue, I just want to get a disclaimer out of the way. All the viewpoints I express in this video are solely my own and do not reflect those of Goldman Sachs. Also, I can only speak from experience as a software engineer and not in some other capacity like an investment banker because I was not one. Before I even begin with my experience working at the firm, I want to backtrack to the interview process I had to go through more than two and a half years ago to get this job. Now, this wasn't actually the first time I had interviewed with them. The in first interview was almost three months before the second interview, where I actually did land the job offer. I had to go through two phone screens where I was given two coding questions each conducted via coder pad. I managed to solve all the problems, but the recruiter responded a couple days later saying that the role was no longer available due to some internal re restructuring. Almost three months later from that point, I was contacted on LinkedIn by another one of the recruiters, uh, and this time I only had to go through one phone screen with two questions that fell on par with lead code mediums. Fortunately, I solved both correctly and moved to a virtual on-site interview conducted via Zoom. Through a process that lasted almost five hours, I moved through four rounds where I was given a total of seven coding questions most of which felt like lead code mediums, and one involved dynamic programming for an optimization step, and there was also one system design problem that came up. I was given an offer a few days later with a starting base comp of 135k with an end of year bonus of 60k. I felt the interview process was lengthy but overall fair in terms of difficulty in that I wasn't given questions that were so hard it becomes can you solve this one super hard question or the uh, gotcha kind of questions. There were questions that I managed to get within reasonable time by using general knowledge of algorithms and data structures. I was on a back office team within the risk division and I worked on an internal application for e data ETL and storage. Uh, great team members. I really liked working with my team. I thought we were a high-functioning and a proactive team, and we had great camaraderie. We used the Agile system with tools like Jira for project management and Confluence for knowledge sharing. Uh, and I feel like these are all common tools among tech teams in general, um, even outside GS. Uh, we had typical two-week sprint duration with daily scrum meetings. And uh, this was my first time working on a team where its members are distributed across uh, different global offices. Sometimes this makes meetings with team members a bit difficult to coordinate. My team in particular was comprised of people in the New York, London, and occasionally the Bangalore office. London is five hours ahead of New York, so this means that when it's morning in New York, it may already be the afternoon over there in the UK. So the implication there is that if you're in New York and you schedule an after lunch meeting with someone working in London, well, they might already be near the end of their day. Uh, to get around this, I typically moved any meetings with people in London to the morning of the next day in Eastern time. So I can catch them during the early afternoon hours in London time. One of the results of this time difference is that we typically had our daily scrums at the beginning of the day for people in New York City. And sometimes there were even back-to-back -back morning meetings, uh, which I didn't really like because I noticed that it gave me meeting fatigue and it detracted from my focus on coding-related work, which I do best in the morning when I'm at my highest energy and my mind is fresh. Over time, I just learned to deal with it because it's something that's hard to coordinate or change. Now I want to talk about the tech stack I used. Goldman Sachs is a huge organization, and the tech stack that you use varies from team to team, and it really depends on the nature of the work itself. On some teams, you may use a lot of their internally developed language called slang. On others, you may work with C++ and algorithmic trading, and Python for post-processing of data, machine learning modeling, or building ML infrastructure. On others, you may focus on deployment and infra server infrastructure. 
uh, the application I was working on was supposed to give non-technical users the capability to build their own data pipelines via a low-code interface. My work was mostly focused on full-stack app development, and the technologies I worked with was Node, JavaScript, and React in the front end, along with Redux for state management. The back end I worked on was built with Java and Spring, with communication between the front end and back end being done through a REST API that was hosted on the Spring back end. Additionally, I used Python for many ad hoc tasks, but I'd say that was only like 5% uh, of the time with 95% uh, of it being focused on full stack app dev. Uh, something I found inter interesting while working at a large financial firm was that I could do my work without knowing much about finance itself. And uh, I'm speaking for the work I've done on the specific team I worked in, but this doesn't necessarily serve as a blanket statement that holds true for jobs across the whole firm. I'd imagine if you're doing something related to trading software, uh, you would be required to understand trading fundamentals for stocks and options. So yeah, it may sound counterintuitive, but there are tech roles here that you can do without being a finance person. But I personally would have liked a role where there was more crossover into that financial domain. And it just didn't really uh, be the, uh, end up being the case for the particular work I did. The next topic I'm going to cover is the work culture. From my experience, I would say that the culture at GS is one, of, uh, one that is characterized by goal-oriented teamwork and a work hard, play hard mentality. Individuals are evaluated on their ability to execute and follow through with the work they take on. As an employee at GS, I often felt the pressure to deliver and perform at a level and pace that was expected of me. I remember having a one-on-one -on -one meeting with one of my managers who mentioned that they follow a tight feedback loop and managers here don't wait until it's time for your performance review at the end of the year to tell you if there are any concerns about your performance. And that's a good thing because it's less problematic to address an issue when they arise than to let it fester. The Agile system used on most teams plays a direct role in maintaining this tight feedback loop. If you're working on something that's taking a long time and progress has been slow, you typically have a conversation with, with your manager about what your roadblocks are and how you and or the team can clear out the obstacles in order for you to make progress. As a counterpoint, despite the high expectations and sometimes aggressive deadlines, we did also try to maintain a good work-life balance because if you don't have time to recuperate, it's very easy to burn out, especially in a field as mentally intensive as tech. And they understand that, which is why they did encourage us to make use of PTO hours when necessary. Something I really liked while working there was just collaborating with really smart and knowledgeable people and also having the opportunity to mentor others as well. There is an abundance of resources and support groups at Goldman for those who are trying to find their career interests which is why I think it's an especially great place for people who are in the earlier stages of their careers. The firm is supportive of those who are trying to further their education, whether from taking undergrad or graduate courses on a part-time basis, getting a certification, or through their many internal course offerings. For example, I took a series of machine learning courses as well as a course on basic accounting concepts through their internal training portal. And if I remember correctly, they offer up to a $10,000 annual limit for educational reimbursement for those who are taking courses towards a degree or certification. One last thing I thought was pretty neat about working there was that during the summer months, they usually hosted weekly networking events that you can take advantage of to discover new people and teams, and generally just get to know what other people are doing throughout the firm. And you can grab some food and wine too, and so that was pretty neat. Now that I've covered work culture, another closely related topic I want to talk about is the performance review and how it was done here. They use a system where you elect up to eight people to review your accomplishments and performance. Each of those people answer a set of questions that pertain to how well they thought you contributed to your team or project. Additionally, you as the reviewee write what you think are your own greatest contributions for the year as well as strengths and weaknesses. I think the biggest takeaways here is the review system is designed in a way where to even be at a stage where others can vouch for your accomplishments, you'd have to be proactive about collaborating with other people like team members or even other people on other teams as needed throughout the year. And the second insight is to get comfortable in self-promoting your own contributions because that highlights your effectiveness as an employee.
While there were things I liked about working at Goldman Sachs, there were also some things I found that I didn't like, and I want to address some of those pain points in this part of the video. So here's some of those cons from my personal experience. Number one is the siloed infrastructure, uh, meaning that we often can't have complete control or autonomy over the entirety of, of our own tech stack. For example, I had to talk to an infrastructure team just to get access to a deployment server because we or our team aren't the admins of that server. That team manages the server. And uh, number two is uh, something I wanted to work on while I was there was using large scale cloud technologies like AWS or GCP. I wanted to be able to do this type of system design that often comes up in tech interviews, but I left the firm barely doing any such work related to software architecture. Again, this may vary based on your team because I remember talking to a coworker who mentioned that their team is moving their infrastructure from on-site computing resources onto GCP. Number three is the uh, lack of dedicated hardware. So they don't use a, uh, they don't issue a work laptop or anything. Everything is done via a VM that you used via a thin client computer if you're working in the office or a remote desktop if you're working from home. This wasn't a deal breaker for me. And one silver lining to that is if you, uh, that you can log on to any thin client throughout the building and work from there. I think it only becomes a real issue when you need to do something computationally intensive, which I wasn't involved in. The fourth thing I want to talk about is that internal mobility was difficult. It's like you had to re-interview for the job just like an external applicant. I was exploring some roles related to infrastructure for machine learning model deployment and was told that I had to go through a regular interview loop. After weighing the costs and benefits, I decided that it wasn't worth pursuing because I didn't want to go through a long, arduous, lead code style process to change a role just to potentially get paid the same. And by the time I studied enough where I was ready to interview for that particular role, I would also be ready to interview elsewhere. Number five. So you can't effectively trade stocks or options as an employee at GS, uh, and that's just their company policy. You are allowed to buy and sell ETFs, but you have to get your intent to trade pre-approved You can before you can place an order. And you are also required to hold whatever security you bought for at least 30 days. So you basically cannot react quickly to short-term market movements. They did allow me to keep whatever individual stocks I, uh, stock holdings I already had when I joined the firm, however. Lastly, I want to talk about the employee perks they offer. In my opinion, the biggest perk for me was that they had a great on-site gym. The only downside is that it wasn't complimentary. They have the system where if you're an associate level or below, you pay $51 per month. And for VP and above, I think it was close to $70 a month or something. I was at the associate level, so I was paying $51 per month to use the gym, which is actually not bad considering the gym had readily available workout clothes, towels, showers, great equipment, and knowledgeable staff. Uh, I often went directly there after work to get a workout in before heading home. So that concludes my insider scoop on what it was like working at Goldman Sachs. I try to be as objective as possible because all jobs have their positives and negatives and sometimes it's even more nuanced than that. It's more like opportunities and opportunity costs. Overall, I enjoyed working at Goldman and thought it was a great place to build a good foundation for my career. I hope that this has been an eye opener, especially for those in tech who are considering to interview for jobs at Goldman Sachs. Uh, with that said, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.